when you demand identification, I have to display this. That's what they told me in the class, that's what the law says. The officer wants to take away and actually, if I don't display, there's really not much you can do because there is no penalty attached to that. I have to carry this if I'm carrying this. Are you carrying? I don't answer questions. Okay, so if you have a weapon in the car, then what? You got one on your hip. So what? We are the armed attorneys today. We're talking about a police interaction. This is a little bit different than what we normally discuss, but it's a combination of a first and second amendment audit uh, that is worth discussing. But before we begin, show your support for the second amendment by hitting that like button. And today's brought to you by our friends over at Sonoran Desert Institute. Check them out at sdi.edu slash armed hyphen attorneys. Learn about gunsmithing, online armor courses, and much more sdi.edu slash armed hyphen attorneys. Now this happened uh, in our backyard. It's a little bit older video, but it's making the rounds on the internet. I think the best way to characterize it as a hilarious first slash second amendment audit here. What do you think about this? Oh yeah. And you can really go down a rabbit hole when looking at these. Uh, uh, there's just, we, we all know that there's a lot of audit videos out there. This one's very funny because the guy obviously knows his stuff. And the police officer, while not overly hostile, you can tell he's extremely agitated, but the guy is, does a very good job because he does, he gives the officer absolutely no openings to exploit, to try to, to raise the stakes or, or try to pull the guy out of his car or really, you know, really take it to him in a, in a bad way. I got to push back on saying not hostile. I mean, stay to the end. Cause I mean, he does pull his gun on the guy. And so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from, what, from, from what we're told, there's no actual video of the gun pulling. Right. Right. But, uh, but yes, whenever he goes, uh, whenever he says, you don't need to pull your gun on me. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that is pretty aggressive. So we'll, we'll get there. The video is kind of broken up into three parts. We're going to go through each one, starting with just kind of the initial stop. And let's roll that clip now. Roll down. Why do you pull me over? I'll tell you that if you roll it down. Why can't you tell me now? Because the reason I pulled you over is you're yelling something from your car. So what? Huh? So what? That's why you pulled me over, because I'm yelling. I don't know if you need help or anything. Oh, I don't need help. So, Thank you. Okay, let me see your driver's license real quick. I don't need help. Okay, can I see your driver's license? What for? Can you use the turn signal when you make a turn? Of course I did. Let me see your driver's license. You can hear the sound on the dash cam, okay, too. Let me, see, let me see your driver's license. This is a good reminder. What is the standard by which police officers can temporarily stop someone in a vehicle? It's reasonable suspicion. It's lower than probable cause. And as we can see from this video, um, Initially, the officer says, hey, I heard you yelling. Do you need help? He says no. So that should theoretically be the end of the transaction until the officer does what? Yes. Well, I want to add that Texas, a couple of decades ago, created a very special type of rule that many states have adopted as well, and that is called the community caretaking function. Yep. Uh, it was uh, authorized as an authorized reason to stop somebody by the U.S. Supreme Court and the community caretaking function. And that's basically what the officer initially says he's doing whenever he says, I just needed to see if you needed help, Yeah, which is kind of a ridiculous catch-all. Apparently, this guy was just yelling out his window and this to the officer said, oh, that guy must need help. I will stop him under my police authorized duty of community caretaking. But as soon as he says, I don't need help, you know, and he says, can I go? You know, the officer has to morph a little bit and that should have been the end of it. Yes. Yeah. And he morphs into his reasonable suspicion for the stop uh, was failing to signal. And the Supreme Court has, has commented on this because there are so many traffic regulations that, I mean, they say effectively you don't have a right to privacy in your vehicle. They lament this, but at the same time saying, you know, there's really no other way to administer this stuff. But there's so many rules. I mean, you talk to any police officer, they say it's just a matter of time before you commit a traffic infraction. Oh, yeah. In fact, we should have here a prop of the Texas Transportation Code, which it's literally this thick, double columned in like six point type. And that's how thick the Texas Transportation Code is. The Texas legislature, for some reason, uh, feels to need to hyper-regulate uh, not only automobiles on the road, but also bicyclists, 
pedestrians, everybody who has anything associated with the roadway, they want to, they, it is hyper-regulated. For example, the signal law, most people don't know this, but in Texas, the signal law says not only do you have to signal, but you have to signal 100 feet before your intended turn. Yeah. So if the officer says, well, you signaled, but it was only 50 feet before your turn, yeah. then they've developed reasonable su suspicion to stop you. And so that kind of takes us into our second phase of this interaction. Now, the police officer no longer having that community caretaking, evolving it into reasonable suspicion. Our driver now has to identify himself by providing his driver's license and license to carry. Now, this is a really interesting point for anyone across the country. You need to know your uh, duty to notify laws. Now, some states have something on the books to the likes of, hey, if you're carrying a firearm, you have to inform the police that you have a firearm present in your vehicle. Texas is, is just a little bit different. And I think it's this is a good illustration and kind of fun example of this. Uh, let's go with this second part. You just crack your window if that's what you want to do. It's already cracked. I can't see that. Well, doesn't matter. Here. I don't wish to answer questions. You have to let me know if there's a weapon in the car. Did you not take the class? I did. Did they tell you you have to tell them? When you happen? demand identification, I have to display this. That's what they told me in the class. That's what the law says. If the officer wants to take the weapon. And actually, if I don't display, there's really not much you can do because there is no penalty attached to that. I have to carry this if I'm carrying this. Are you carrying? I don't answer questions. Okay, so if you have a weapon in the car, then what? You got one on your hip. So what? I'll go on your breath. No, you don't. How do I know? Because you can't smell my breath? I can smell something coming Oh, really? Let's see. Let me do some field sobriety on I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, where are you coming from? Huh? Where are you coming from? You saw me where I was coming from. Oh, I, I just saw you driving down. Are you done with this? I'm done with that, yeah. All right, cool. Where are you coming from? I don't answer questions. I've already told you. Let me know when I'm free to go. All right, so we see the contrast here, whereas instead of having to tell you, hey, I have a gun, what does Texas's law say? Well, Texas is, it, what we see here is actually a convergence of many different Texas laws. Uh, so just going back, trying to do history briefly, which, you know, I have a real problem with doing history briefly. Uh, but we'll, we'll cut it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Texas first law said that if you, you're only allowed to carry a gun in your car if you have a license. If you have a license and you have a gun with you, you have to show the officer your license. Otherwise, there is a penalty that you could have your license suspended. Then about 15 years ago, Texas said, well, no, you don't have to have a license in your car. And so that created this weird kind of situation where license holders still obligated to tell the police officer he has a gun and show his license. People who carry in their car just because they're carrying their car had no such obligations. So the Texas legislature said, this is a problem. we got to fix it. So what they did was they reached a very interesting compromise, whether intentional or not, because the legislature, they, have, they do a lot of things that have unintended consequences. They created a law where it maintained the showing the ID part. It kind of cut the uh, telling them whether or not you had a gun part out. But most importantly, what it did was it eliminated all penalties for failing to do that. And so the man is right whenever he says, even if I didn't show you this, there's nothing you can do about it because there's no penalty attached. And I think most police officers find that to be surprising. Yeah. And you can see, I mean, the officer's frustration is building. I mean, he's communicating him through a crack in the window. He's <laughs> obviously saying F the police, you know. He, so, I mean, he's being antagonistic, but at this point, asserting his rights, uh, I mean, correctly. I mean, what do we say about the First Amendment? It's not there to talk about the weather. So if he wants to be rude, protected. But... And right. it's and it's not there to protect popular speech. No, no. Uh, so yes, every police officer is going to be fine with. Hey, police officer, how's your day? Nice weather. Thank Boy, you for your service. High five. Boom. Thank you. For your you know that's that's not what the First Amendment's for. You know, with, is this the way I conduct myself around the police? No, but you know, legal. So we go on to this this next part. So he's correctly identified. He has to show his LTC. 
but no penalty. I think there's also some good arguments there that he may not even have to do that, carrying yeah. under the authority of Texas's motor, you know, it's the well, castle doctrine extended to your vehicle slash the constitutional carry law. Right, and that's what I wanted to point out, was this did take place in 2022, yeah. which was uh, a little less than a year after Texas constitutional carry went into effect. And so he really didn't have to do anything at all. He doesn't have to tell the officer even if the officer sees his gun there in the seat, as long as it's in a holster, he's a okay. So, uh, so he's got a lot of protections there. And I think at one point the police officer kind of finally realizes that this guy knows his stuff and I'm not going to be able to run him in on any kind of bogus charge or further give him a hard time. So it's interesting to see how this further plays out. Yeah. Let's go to the part three. Still desperate to find something to use in retaliation against Clear Lake, Deputy Vega inspects the lights on the front of the vehicle. Also, what is your name? What's your name? Your name? Sheriff, that's your name? Sheriff? I, I, I'm not familiar with the English alphabet, sir. Uh, okay. Can I have a, can I have an incident number, please? Oh, a ticket, a ticket, okay. In so while I have you here, okay, I don't want you exiting the vehicle because you have a weapon in the car. Did or I I'm exit the? To, or I'm going to did I exit you? the vehicle? I'm, I'm, I'm did I exit the vehicle? Give you your heads up. Did I get, exit the vehicle? Hey, can I? You do have a dash cam, right? Very good. You can't just pull me over because I said F the police. I hope you realize that. Stupid. A moment later, the deputy returns. I'm sorry? Do you have insurance on the vehicle? Yeah. Can you show it to me, please? It doesn't come back. Of course it comes back. Not on my system, it doesn't. Also, it's not typical behavior for somebody to be yelling out of the vehicle. Have you had anything to drink tonight? Is that your current address? Is that a question? Yes, sir. Is that your current do I Do I answer questions? Okay, I'll just assume that's incorrect then. And why would you do that? Did you read my address on the driver's license? It didn't have an, address, didn't that, have an apartment number on your driver's Of course license. it does. Let me see. Can you verify? You've already seen it. I've already complied with that part. I know, but I'm just saying it didn't have, a driver, didn't have an apartment number. Of course it does. On your, on your driver's license? Man, man, man. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, so now we have the insurance not magically come up in the police officer's system, you know, data terminal, which, you know, Texas courts and many courts across the United States have held that that is, that could be grounds for reasonable suspicion. You know, they run a license plate, they see the vehicle's uninsured. Um, that could be grounds for a stop in and of itself. And so he has to see the insurance. And there's a weird issue here that I think is worth talking about. Yes. Uh, Texas, like most states, state that all your documents have to have the same address. If you fail to notify the, the state of any of your address changes on any of your pieces of information, then uh, that's a problem. And so apparently, and so keep in mind, this police officer has now seen three pieces of information that have this man's address, his license to carry, his driver's license, and his insurance card. And all three of those addresses have to match. And a lot of people don't realize that because in the hassle of moving, or if you have somebody who moves frequently, a lot of times people just forget to do this, but it is required by law. And apparently this officer is really searching for something because he claims the addresses don't match, but then we find out that they only don't match because allegedly the apartment number was left off of one of them. Yeah, interesting. I wonder if that's true. But we go into kind of our last part of this, and I think this is an important thing to point out, asking a police officer whether or not you're free to go. Um, and, and that kind of comes up in this last part, and then we get a little aggressive, and we got to talk about it. But why is, you know, when interacting with law enforcement, why is it important to ask them if you're free to go? Well, that's kind of the bright line uh, because the, the U.S. Supreme Court has kind of outlined this murky area 
believe me, I would love it if they would outline, if they would put more bright lines down between, you know, Fourth Amendment issues when the police are allowed to do something, when they're not allowed to do something. And so you have this kind of murky situation with regard to a detention, a lawful detention. It's not yet an arrest and you're not, you know, you're, you're, you, you might get chased down and charged with another crime if you just suddenly drive away. And so it is important to know when the stop is terminated and the only way that we have been told that we can know this for sure is the question, am I being detained or am I free to go? So we have him asserting that. And eventually the police officer relents, says this is over. Um, the traffic stop is over. And we get to this kind of fourth part where I'd say tensions are at the highest. Let's check that out. The officer returns a moment later and again initiates the discussion by showing his disdain for Clear Lake exercising his right to free speech. Yeah, I say that I've never met anybody quite like you that would uh, yell at an officer doing their job. But so you have a great let me understand. No fines, no penalties. Uh, may I ask you a question? No. Uh, this question's on there. There's the uh, address. Yeah, there. no, I have a question. Can you, can you get your supervisor right here, please? No, uh, is the stop over? The stop is over. You may leave. All right. You don't exit until I get out. Go ahead. Well, uh, you said the stop is over, right? Okay, I'm not. I'm not getting out. I will. Okay, there is no need to draw your weapon, man. Are you drawing your weapon? You. Don't get out of the car. I didn't get out of the car. You told me that already. Yeah. Did I get out of the car? Go yourself. Yeah. Right over there, you can. You know, he says traffic stops over. Officer requests or the sheriff requests that he wait till he pull away before he gets out of his vehicle or drives off. You know, our driver being the guy who he is, uh, leans his head out the door and what happens? Well, apparently the police officer pulls the gun on him because the officer says, I think you have a gun, which is an assumption. There has been nothing established that he does in fact have a gun. The officer is assuming he has a gun and he's saying you have a gun. And so do not exit your vehicle. Now, what this man has correctly interpreted is that the exiting of the vehicle part applied during the stop. Once he was told he's no longer detained, I think it's reasonable for him to believe that he apparently could exit his vehicle at that point. And apparently this driver decides to test the water by uh, opening his door, but not fully exiting the vehicle, to which he exclaims, I never exited the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... There's a lot of interesting points of this duty to notify versus duty to, you know, just produce a license or permit to carry a handgun. At what point police officers can pull you over. All right. I want us to score him on a scale of one to 10. Don't do a rookie score. It needs a decimal point in it. So I'm probably going to give him a 9.5 out of 10 minus some points for style. I mean, this had, isn't how I would conduct myself. But yeah, I think he did a good job. I think that he definitely gets points for the fact that he was uh, he was aggressive, which I I'm feeling a little punchy this morning, so maybe I appreciate his aggression a little more. Uh, but I think where he really shines in this is that he was able to get away completely free. No citations, no fines, no nothing. And so he was able to achieve his goals of frustrating the officer, uh, confronting him with some very serious legal issues, and then ultimately prevailing by not getting a citation, not getting a fine, and actually you know, was able to kind of add the, the icing on top uh, by actually goading the police officer into pulling his gun on him. So, score? Mm, you gave him a 9.5? I'll go with a 9.6. I'll do the prices right on you. All right. Well, I want to hear what y'all think. Did he handle himself appropriately? Give this guy a score, one out of 10. How do you think he did? But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing, hitting that like button, and help us fight the anti 2A algorithm by sharing this video. And don't forget to question and comment in the section down below. And until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.